I think optimization means lots of things to different people and I think its meaning has evolved over time. If you go back two or three years, a lot of the talk of collateral optimization was to do with cheapest to deliver. Uh, whether cash or fixing them or perhaps some equities were, were cheapest was really the key. And there were simple solutions emerged to that by just stacking up a, a set of assets and then picking them off the top. But as time has gone by and as more regulations have kicked in, it's become clear that that's not quite enough. Certainly for sell-side firms who are collateralising with their buy-side clients, they are concerned by lots of other things like key ratios. One in particular is balance sheet, so the, uh, the LRD ratio. So if, if by using a cheaper to deliver, the LRD balance sheet is going the wrong way or they're hitting a leverage ratio constraint, um, then uh, that, that ceases to be the optimal collateral. They're also finding that there's lots of trapped collateral in different pockets around the organisation and now collateral has become scarcer. A lot of effort has gone into freeing up that trapped collateral and getting that into the optimization algorithm, as it were. Um, another key thing now, nowadays is economic profit. So banks are looking much more at trades where perhaps they could park some equities with their custodian, release cash, pay down their uh, commercial uh, paper programme, which then releases costs, place the cash they release with in a commercial lending unit. So there are complex trades like this which can release economic profit and have dramatic impacts on uh, what collateral is used where. So optimization has become a really a much more sophisticated matter. And I think when firms look at the plethora of regulations, with many regulations hitting them all at the same time, it's tempting to look at uh, each of these in point solutions. Uh, tempting the, uh, you know, the lowest cost per project might seem to be to look at each one in isolation. But in practice, people then end up with masses of duplication, uh, inconsistent data, missing data, so it ends up in the long term being more expensive. So optimising across regulations can also mean looking at them in a holistic fashion and trying to drive out, for example, data stores that are required to meet regulation, but trying to get business benefit out of them. So you can analyse where is your profitability, where, where can you optimise better, so you're getting a, a genuine uh, increased revenue or cost reduction out of the project which you have to do to meet a, a, a compliance requirement. So I think optimization has really is continues to grow in sophistication. In our experience, uh, a lot of firms don't really think about operating model. Uh, Ten years ago, nobody used the term. Now the term is used quite a lot, but nobody really knows what it means. There's no industry definition. We very much think about it's important to start with the end in mind. So if you look at all of these array of regulations, you look at cost pressures, you look at customer pressures, new products and services people need to launch, all these pressures on businesses, the key is to start with the end in mind. So have a clear vision. What are the drivers of this change? Uh, what are the objectives for each of those drivers? And how would you know whether you've met those objectives? That's what we call goals, with clear metrics, with a start point and end point. So if you have a clear vision, then you can steer the design of that target state. And if everyone's moving to the same target state, you've got a much greater chance of uh, achieving a good result. We view operating model as being multidimensional and all those dimensions are interlinked. Business process is clearly very key, the end-to-end -end process, but that's linked to controls because controls are typically implemented through process. Uh, processes are automated and they require functionality. Functionality links to architecture and to technology. But there's also people interact with the technology. So you've got roles and responsibilities in terms of how the actors interact with the operating model. You've got to deliver products and services through this operating model. So how do they get delivered to customers? And data, which underpins everything, is transformed as it moves uh, through the end-to-end -end process. So if you look at any of those individual dimensions in isolation, the chances are you're, you'll find it very difficult to come up with a, a coherent holistic end solution. So in our philosophy, we view all of those as interlinked and it's really important to drive out a target state that everybody can sign up to. Uh, so middle office, trading, ops, technology can all sign up to an agreed position they're gonna get to. That way you've got a reasonable chance of getting a, in fact a good chance we would say, of getting an outcome that meets your original vision. Without that kind of thinking and planning, everybody starts pulling in different directions, you spend far more money, projects overrun, they get cancelled, and you end up really with the mess that we see around us now.